Yeah. No more skunk hat, baby. I don't know if there's a bite. Yeah, there's a bite. Oh, got one. Oh, striper. Mm, don't lose this fish. Don't lose this fish. Do it to peace, guys. <laughs> Woo! Six pound bass, guys. Look at that. Good morning, folks. All right. We are here at Mazer Lake. We're going to be throwing a bunch of top water today. Um, mostly just using the baits from our mystery tackle box. And first. We are going to start off with the Strike Pro Terminant Grade Popper. And uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what we can't get to blow up on this today. And as you notice, uh, I'm not wearing the skunk hat. And that's because I actually went fishing last week and I, I caught one. I wore the skunk hat all day. It took me six hours, but I caught a little guy. But hey, it counts, whatever. I probably won't be uploading that video, but I did catch a bunch of branches. And I did catch a fish, and I did remove the skunk hat. So with that, let's get to work. We got our own nut tied. And let's rock out with our rod. And the reason I didn't upload that, I'm not gonna upload last week's video, is because I had a faux pro which is a fake GoPro, and apparently I lost half of my footage. Everybody say thank you to my beautiful wife who bought me a GoPro Hero 8 and gave it to me early. She bought it for me for Father's Day and uh, couldn't hold on to the package. She was dying to give it to me, so she gave it to me on Mother's Day. Uh, so anyway, I went fishing on the Coleman Moon River last week. I was hoping to upload that video this weekend, but my faux pro. Uh, I couldn't get rid of the date time stamp. For some reason, I couldn't set the wide angle, so the footage is shot. Half of the day didn't even, like the camera kept freezing up, so it didn't work. I mean, it was, it started off as a really good day. First 15 minutes, no wind. Weather was nice. We got three bites right off the bat. I thought it was going to be an awesome day probably I thought I was gonna catch like 20 fish that day that's not what happened this is what happened first it was windy it's all hell two I kept casting into the trees because of the wind it's trying to get underneath trees and whatnot and we would just catch my baits and throw it right into the branches so I spent half of my day removing snags from from trees and rocks and everything else and uh, I caught my personal best branch. Yeah, that's right here. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> Woo! And uh, 15 minutes before I was about to leave, I decided to go on a wacky rig and see if I can't catch a little rock bass. And bam, what do you know? One hit, caught him, removed the skunk hat. Dink -a dink I'll take it. I will take it. Yes. Guys, all day long. Oh, all day long for this little guy right here. <laughs> but you know what? Hey, skunk cat is coming off. I am done. I am done for the day. Yeah. Get it. Not a waste. Our approach today is just to cover water. So we'll get to the spot, we'll fan out, we'll cast uh, two to three times in each location, move about 10 degrees until we cover the whole 180, and then we'll move to the next spot. Because, uh, I mean, with my experience, as long as you, you know, if you keep casting in the same spot, there might be a fish there, and you might actually entice them on a second or third cast. the 
action on this bait is dope. Super easy. You don't have to worry about trying to get at the snake because it snakes all by itself. Just not getting the bites. I mean, that's that's not saying that this bait doesn't work. It's just saying that that's not what the fish want today. As you, you and I both know, you can't plan for fishing. I mean, before I go fishing, I stock my bag and I bring what I think they're gonna bite. Once I get there, I realize that everything that I brought is not what they wanna bite. Um, so your, your plan is constantly changing throughout the day. I mean, even if you actually bring what they're biting on, it may only work for, you know, 15 minutes to an hour, and then you gotta switch baits again. But the key is, you know, contact time experience. Just keep fishing, find out what works, and uh, build upon that. And when you do pack your bag, you have a better idea of what works and what doesn't. But there's so many different variables. I think that's what makes fishing great and that's what makes good fishermen good fishermen. And that's what I'm trying to become. I'm decent, but I am by no means an expert. I would say more of a intermediate. And my goal this year is to fish a lot more hard baits because I, I was looking at my, my fish brain profile, uh, which uh, my fish brain name is right here. If you guys want to follow me, that'd be great. About 85% of the fish I've caught, I've caught on soft plastics. And it's not that I don't throw hard baits, I do. I just don't think I fish them well or I'm fishing in the right areas. All right, well, we fished top water for a couple hours, no luck. Uh, we, we are now going to fish some soft plastics, Texas rigged, of course. Uh, we'll use a peg stop just to make sure that we're not dragging back weeds every time we cast. Uh, wish me luck, we'll see what happens. We are gonna use these, these X-Zone Pro Series floating creature crawls. Still early. While their visibility is probably not that great to be using green pumpkin. And since this is a floating bait, probably get like a nice low drop on it, hopefully. So let's go with a sim eye. We'll go with a maybe a quarter ounce. Four ounce. We'll go with uh, one of the mystery tackle box EWG EWG four out hooks. Um, and then we, since it's weedy, we're going to use these uh, lifted jigs, uh, medium peg stops to keep this from separating from the hook and the bait. It'll uh, provide less snags for sure. For those that have never used peg stops and are wondering how in the hell you use this, it's actually very easy. So you see this loop right above the peg stop? When you run your line right through there, get a little ways up. And then you're gonna grab both, both ends, the tagging and the main line. And you're gonna just roll this bad boy right up onto there. And you're just going to pull it until that tag in line comes through. And bam, you have a peg stop on there. Then, we're going to put our quarter ounce weight. And our four rod EWG hook. We'll tie this on with the uni knot. Tagging, grab one of our egg zone baits here. Those actually have a nice texture. Make sure you uh, make sure that you, you loosen all the appendages. It's a little bit of extra action. 
Run that through about a quarter inch. Around to the top end of the hook. And bam. Push our peg stop all the way down, and this will help us eliminate a bunch of snags. Since I have a crazy layer of weeds right here, I'm going to tighten up my drag just a little bit. So I'm going to have to reel these bad boys in so they don't swim into the weeds. Got to keep them on the top. We don't get any bites in about 30 minutes. We'll put a little bit of spike it, some uh, garlic dip on there. Usually entices them to bite. We're throwing a creature bait with the assumption that not very many people are fishing with creature baits. Drag to loop. Oh, not a bad one. Weedy. Hmm. Nice little pound. Hi, brother. Thank you, sir. Well, um, not too bad of a day. We caught one. We tried a bunch of different things. Uh, we went soft plastics, top water, swim jigs, and we landed one. I mean, just my luck. That's probably why I'm called the horrible angler. Uh, but anyway, I mean, we didn't get skunked, so we're not putting the skunk hat on the next time we go fishing, which is tomorrow. Uh, so that video will probably upload midweek, maybe maybe next Friday, I don't know. It just depends on, on how much free time I get to, to edit and post the video. But anyway, guys, peace out. Until next time, thanks.